In 2010, three new F1 teams joined the grid. Lotus, Campos, which then became HRT, and Mana, which then was rebranded as Virgin Racing following the investment of Virgin Media owner Richard Branson. Their first car was actually designed using computational fluid dynamics, which is quite an interesting concept in the world of Formula 1 for designing the car. However, it had, the first car had a massive flaw in that its fuel tank wasn't big enough for it to last the whole race, so major fuel management issues were a major Achilles heel with this car, along with the fact that it was the most uncompetitive car out of the three new teams. In addition, they didn't do very well in the following season, finishing bottom of the Constructors' Championship in 2010 and in 2011. In 2012, the team was rebranded as Marussia F1, but unfortunately that didn't really help in terms of actual results with them failing to score a single point in 2012. However, they did move up in the Constructors' Championship with a 12th place finish for Timo Glock at the 2012 Singapore Grand Prix, which actually put them in front of both Lotus, which was now branded as Caterham, as, as well as HRT, and that gave them a real opportunity to move up the field relative to the newer teams and gain a little bit more money. However, this was halted by Caterham just about taking that 10th place back in the final race of the season in Brazil when Vitaly Petrov managed to finish in 11th place just outside the points ahead of Charles Peake, who was the second Marussia driver alongside Timo Glock at the time. It resulted in Caterham finishing in 10th and Marussia down in 11th. 2013 saw the team enter a brand new driver lineup with highly rated Frenchman Jules Bianchi partnering British driver Max Chilton. The team also introduced the Kerr system for the first time to their car, and the results actually improved the overall performance and standings of the team, with Jules Bianchi taking a fantastic 13th place at the second round of the championship in Malaysia, which was actually good enough on the overall season for them to beat Caterham to 10th place in the overall Constructors' Championship. In addition, Max Chilton was able to finish every single race of his rookie year, becoming the first driver, rookie driver to, to do so. Twenty fourteen saw the team retain their driver lineup and move to Ferrari power following the introduction of the new hybrid era V6 turbos. Now initially this seemed to be a bad move considering how competitive the actual engine was. However, the team's high point in their overall history came this season at the twenty fourteen Monaco Grand Prix where Jules Bianchi, after overcoming several penalties, managed to score the team's first ever F1 points, taking 9th place in the, in the standings to earn the team 2 points and moving them in front of their nearest rivals, Caterham, but also Ferrari-powered Sauber into 9th place, a position they were able to hold for the rest of the season. However, the team's highest ever point was then followed by a massive low point later on that season. As, a, as a, Towards the end of the 2014 Japanese Grand Prix, Jules Bianchi suffered a fatal crash after colliding with a recovery vehicle that was attempting to clear the Sauber of Adrian Supertil that had crashed the lap before. Bianchi sadly died of his injuries 10 months later, a week before the Hungarian Grand Prix, and there were many tributes to him as, with, from all the drivers, and his number was retired as a mark of respect. There was also a low point for the team off the circuit, as after the Russian Grand Prix, administrators were called to put the team in administration, with several hundred jobs under threat following this, and they were unable to finish the 2014 season. So question marks were raised whether the team could continue next season or in the future. However, just when all hope seemed lost, 
businessman Stephen Fitzpatrick bought the team and took them out of administration and the team returned for 20, the 2015 season with Will Stevens and Roberto Mary as drivers. They, weren't, they were the rear gunners of the field but their attention soon turned to 2016 where they signed for Mercedes power units for 2016 and also for German driver Pascal Wehrlein who is Mercedes, part of Mercedes Young Driver Program and DTM World Champion. They've also signed a young British driver who's looking to take the team forward even close, further up the field and eventually to championship glory. This is the story of what happened. Thank you. 